Hi everyone, I am Neha from Mathematically Inclined and today we are discussing composition of functions. The entire class 12 syllabus has been uploaded under separate playlists. The links for the same are in the description box below. Please note all these videos are crafted not only to suit your CBSE needs but also to help you for the competitive exams. So, let's get started. In order to understand the composition of functions, I have taken three sets in front of me. Name them as A, B and C. Now, if we take a function f, which is moving from A to B, and then, in beginning with the same set B, I take another function G from B to C. If I take a random element here, let's say x. After applying the function f, it becomes f of x. Now, beginning with f of x, this acts as the element to my new function g and gives us the final product as g of fx. In short, the new function which moves from a to c is defined by g of fx. So to define the function, we say if f is a function from a to b and g is a function from b to c, then g of f is defined from a to c as g of fx means g applied to fx for all x belonging to a. You know, it is like considering a series of machines in a factory. So once the raw material X is put into the first machine, it takes it to the next level and creates FX. Now taking this as the input for the next machine, under the mapping G, it creates the final element which is G of FX. So it's more like a chain reaction. There are two very important points to be remembered. So if f is a function from a to b and g is a function from b to c, range of f, which is b, should be the starting point or the domain for the next function g for g of f to exist. Likewise, for f of g to exist, the range of g should be a subset of domain of f. That it brings us to the conclusion that in general, f of g and g of f, they are not the same. Please remember for g of f, f is operated first, followed by g. And for f of g, g is operated first, followed by f. So looking at the very first question, your function f is defined from reals to reals. As fx equal to x square, g is also a real function defined this way. We have to find f of g and g of f. Beginning with f of g, let's say I take x. It is the same as saying applying f to your gx. In place of gx, we have 2x plus 1. Now if f of x is x square, then f of 2x plus 1 becomes 2x plus 1 whole square. Similarly, talking of g of fx, we would be applying g to fx. So this gives us g of x square. If g of x is 2x plus 1, then g of x square automatically becomes 2x square plus 1. And as you can clearly see, your f of g and g of f they give us different values. Second question is a very interesting one which where it tests you for a lot of things. So f and g have been defined in terms of ordered pairs. We need to write f of g and g of f. But before we do that, we need to at least have these f and g's sorted. So from your previous classes, you know that the domain of the function is the first coordinates. So domain of f over here is all the first coordinates that is 1, 3 and 4 and range of f are the second coordinates which are 2, 5 and 1. Similarly domain of g would be 2, 5 and 1 and range of g would be 3, 1. These are the domain and range. 
Now, so if we write this in the function form, this means f of 1 is 2, f of 3 is 5, and f of 4 is 1. Similarly, g of 2 is 3, g of 5 is 1, and g of 1 is 3. In order to begin with f of g, we start with whatever elements are there in domain of g. So we need to find f of g of 2, f of g of 5, and f of g of 1. Which means f applied to g of 2. g of 2 from here is 3. So it is the same as saying f applied to 3. Now f applied to 3 gives us the answer 5. So, f of g of 2 becomes 5. Similarly, starting with f of g of 5, we say this is f applied to g of 5. Now, g of 5 is just 1. And f of 1 further gives us the answer 2. Now, continuing with the third part, f of g of 1, which gives us g of 1 is 3. So, f of 3 further gives us the answer as 5. So this means my f of g finally gives us these answers. With 2 I have 5. With 5 I get 2. And with 1 we get 5 again. This is the answer. Likewise beginning with now g of f we take these elements from the domain. That means we need to find what is g of f of 1, what is g of f of 3 and g of f of 4. I would request you all to pause the video for a moment and try these on your own. Once you have tried on your own, please see this is once again g of f of 1. f of 1 is 2. So g of 2 which finally gives us 3. Similarly, the other ones and thus we say g of f gives us the ordered pairs which are 1, 3, 3, 1, 4, 3. So these are the answers. Now for question 3 you are given only one function r to r which is defined as x square minus 3x plus 2 and you have to find the composition of function with itself. So that means for f of fx, we need to find f applied to fx again. Which means f applied to x square minus 3x plus 2. So, so just to understand, let's say I call this as capital X. So f of capital X would give us capital X square minus 3x plus 2. And now putting back the value for this capital X, you get x square minus 3x plus 2 whole square minus thrice of x square minus 3x plus 2 plus 2. So on simplifying all this, finally our f of fx becomes this. So this brings us to the end of composition of functions. Hope you found it useful. If yes, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel right away. I will see you with more videos. Until then, bye-bye.